Hey guys, it's Bobby here. I just wanted to make a video of one of my newest vacuum cleaners. I just tried to make the video using the tripod and you couldn't hear anything I said, so this is a pretty bad camera, but um, I didn't know it was going to be like that. So the second half, when I actually picked the camera up, is intact still. I can You can hear me on that one. So I'm just going to remake the first part of the video where I just talk about the machine and then the actual demonstration of the machine uh, will be the other video that I have spliced onto the end of this one. So anyway, the machine is called a Sensor S12. It's a Windsor brand. Um, I actually love this machine. I just got it, um, I think the day before yesterday, and I've never had a Sensor, I'm sorry, I keep calling it a Sensor, a Windsor or a Sibo. I know they're the same company. I've wanted a Sibo X4 or X5 for a long time now, but um, I just never have seen one for sale used, and I am too frugal to spend that amount of money on a new one. Um, I actually wanted the one with an automatic height adjustment. This one does not have that. This one instead has a knob for manual height adjustment. But I, right now I'm just learning to live with that. I'm just okay with it. I do love almost everything about this vacuum. So really that little issue with the height adjustment is just not important to me. It's an awesome vacuum. I got it from a really nice guy for $75 on Craigslist and um, I thought it was worth that. So I've never had a Seabor Windsor before. You know, I have Kirby, Dyson, Mila, Hoover, Eureka, Electrolux, Rainbow, Filter Queen. That's where my experience lies. So I've never had a, um, a Windsor or Seabor before. So this is all brand new to me, and I just have never seen such a well-designed vacuum cleaner before. I'm totally impressed by this. I'm actually floored with it. I think I'm kind of in love with it, actually. It's just an awesome machine, really. I adore it. Um, it's just so well designed, and it just works so well. Now, as a collector um, and someone who appreciates old vacuums, there there's something about the aesthetics that I don't like. Um, when you turn it on, there's no headlight, there's no dirt sensor, um, there's no ballooning bag. You know, most of my machines, or a lot of them, have the big soft bags that balloon out, and lots of collectors like that, and I'm one of them. But this one is a hard case machine, but you know what? Everything else about it really makes up for it. It just doesn't come to life when you turn it on, so, you know, that, that kind of makes me sad as far as just the looks of it go. But the way it works and the way it's designed is just, it's really a perfect vacuum. It's just lightweight, but yet powerful. It feels solid. There's no play in any of the parts. Um, it's just awesome. I, I feel like I could throw it down three flights of stairs and it would come out unscathed. I mean, it's just that good of a vacuum. It just feels so, so quality. But um, some of the basic things I like about it, there's a non-loop style handle. I hate loop style handles, for anyone who doesn't know. And you can see my Eureka above that has a loop style handle. The Dyson has a loop style handle. The Hoover Wind Tunnel has a loop style handle. The original ones didn't, but it, that one does. Um, the Hoover Platinum Lightweight Bag has a loop style handle. I hate loop style handles, so I'm glad this one doesn't have that. But then the attachment hose, has a mini version of that same handle, which is extremely comfortable to use. It's just a really awesome design. The um, the handle release pedal is really transparent and simple. It's just it's just great. I just love it. So if you want to change where it stops, you can actually press that button, and then it will actually stop right there. So you can lift it up to go over thresholds, which is good. Because sometimes I've noticed that it will snow plow a little bit, and you'll want to be able to lift it up over the dirt to suck it up. I have to do that with a lot of vacuums, and this apparently is one of them. If you have it set on this and you still want to release the handle further, you can actually drop that, press that pad a little drop more, or you can just turn that feature off, and the handle will go all the way down. So, I don't know if that did it or not. Yeah, I didn't. I went the wrong way with it. There. So now, look how flat that is. That, I mean, that... That's actually flatter than an Orec. An Orec claims to go flat under beds, but you know what? The bag puffs out and it sticks up, and I can't get it under my bed. Of course, I have too much junk under there, but um, this is just awesome. I mean, it, it just it, it's just amazing. It really goes flat to the floor, so that's great. Um, I just, I don't know, I just love everything about that. It sounds so good when you turn it on. It just sounds like a quality machine, kind of like a rainbow or Kirby. You can just tell it's not a cheap bagless Bissell from Walmart, you know. It just sounds awesome. And the power is there. It's got power. It's just really a strong vacuum. It, the suction is good. The agitation is good. It's really amazing. I ordered the accessories for it from GoVacuums.com and spent $90 on filters, bags, a dusting brush, a crevice tool, an upholstery tool. 
Um, and and a clip for the um, that didn't come from Go Vacuums, but a clip for the dusting brush that goes on the handle. So that way I can have the attachments because I'll probably use it for that because the hose is so well designed and it's so powerful. I probably need to get an extension hose, another wand, and a bare floor tool as well because this vacuum does not provide the ability to turn off the brush roll for bare floors. That's the only feature it really lacks besides the headlight, but it's still a great vacuum. The wheels are rubber coated. Um, it only has one wheel in the front and then it's got two wheels in the back and the front wheel is actually a height adjust wheel. You'll see that when I flip the machine over later in the video. This is the stair cleaning handle and then the carry handle is in the back. It's not a very comfortable carry handle but it's effective. So um, The handle will actually come off if you lift this and it just pulls straight off. It comes right off. So that's really awesome because you can actually change the cord and, and switch if you need to just by doing that. Um, if you want to take the bag chamber off, you press this blue button here, it comes right off. It just lifts off the power foot. So you can actually check for clogs. You can check for um, pretty much anything that you would need to do. You can take it apart for cleaning. You can just do a lot with that. So you could even swap this out. If you, if, like if I found a power foot with the automatic height adjust and I just wanted to swap that part out, I could just do that. So that's just really cool. I just totally adore this thing. Um, I was trying to think of something else, anything else that I wanted to say before I start the actual demo part of the video. Oh yeah, I want to show you the bag chamber. Now, if the bag gets full, this light will come on and tell you it'll come on, or if the, there's a clog, or if the filter gets um, full and dirty, and it impedes the airflow, this will come on and tell you, and then the machine will actually stop running. The brush roll also has an indicator right here, so that if the brushes get worn out, and mine aren't, they're in good shape but uh, even being used. Um, you know, it'll tell you that so that you can change the brush roll. When you get the brush roll out, you just press that button, the end cap comes off, and you just pull it out. But to get the bag off, I'm just going to lift this out. It's not on a spring. You just lift it out. To close it, you push it back. But the bag is actually in the door. I've not seen very many vacuums like this. I don't even have any like this, but I know the new Hoover T-Series wind tunnels also do this. They probably got it from SIBO or Windsor. But, um, you know, they do that. And so, um, this is the bag it came with. I do have more on the way. I should ship on Monday, so we'll be here soon. But the bag is a top fill bag, so it's going to last a long time. You can pretty much fill it up to capacity. And as strong as the machine is, I bet you wouldn't suffer any loss in cleaning performance, or not much anyway. But, you know, a lot of, like, the Hoover wind tunnels, they have the hole right here, and so you can only use, like, that much of the bag. So that kind of sucks. But it also has a filter for the air. And when I took this apart, what I noticed was that the motor was spotless. I could not believe it. I was really shocked by that. And the reason I discovered for that is that um, the filter, this filter, the main air filter, actually precedes the motor. It comes before it. So, you know how most vacuums, like the Hoover Wind Tunnel or, or Eureka SmartVac or Dyson, the filter, the main filter is actually after the motor. It's after the motor, and so the motor chamber just gets filthy. But this one, there was not one speck of dust when I took that cover off. So that's just amazing, really. I've just never seen such a well-designed vacuum. It has two belts, and the belts have teeth on them. So they're guaranteed for the life of the machine. Um, and I think it has two belts because of the, um, the feature that it will actually stop and turn off if you... Um, if you suck up something too big, so that means that it, it, um, it actually has like a clutch, I guess. But I'm having trouble getting this filter back in there. Just with one hand, it's hard. But I'm gonna just put the machine back together. This is definitely my new daily driver. It's just, it's just an awesome vacuum. I don't want to use anything else right now. Um, I always feel like that when I get a new machine, but right now this is this is what I'm using. So, all right. So the bag goes back on like that, and then you push that down to make it um, shut. But I wanted to show also just sucking up something and just show the brush roll turning off because I think I didn't show that. I have a few machines that do that. The Dyson is one of them, the uh, the Kenmore Direct Drive is one of them, and the Hoover Z700 is one of them. And I think a few of those videos I did not show that feature, so I want to show that on this one. So, um, here, I'll just take a pair of underwear. Alright, those are my little frugal rooms. Um, <laughs> I was going to use a sock, but this will be fine. And, um, you know, I have to plug it in. Uh, 
All right, so I'm just going to turn this on. And the handle, the switch is in a perfect place. Look at that. That's right where a switch belongs. The Hoover wind tunnel has it there, too. But that's there should be no other place for a switch. My, uh, my beautiful direct drive over there has it as well. But a lot of vacuums have the switch halfway down the body of the machine, and that's a terrible place for it. But um, let me just go ahead and show this. Okay, so you heard the ratcheting sound, like the Dyson. The Dyson also makes a ratcheting sound when you do that. Now that light is flashing. It's telling me, oh my gosh, there's something inside that's prohibiting my uh, homeostasis, my normal action. So, fix me. So I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to remove the obstruction. And then I'm going to just turn it back on and continue normal operation. So this vacuum will actually pull itself across the floor. I don't have many that will do that. Let's see, the, the wind tunnel uh, lightweight platinum bag will do that. The, um, the Eureka Smart Vac will do that if I use it on uh, low carpet. The Royal with the red bag will do that. And I just hand washed that bag. It came out very, very nice. Um, that one will do it to the old Royal 801, and that's because it has the wrong brush roll. It's a, it's a Chevron. It's a newer style brush roll. It's not made for that one, and so that's why it does that. But what other machine do I have that does that? Um, I don't think I have any other machines that will do that. Um, the, the Kenmore Direct Drive made by Panasonic, that'll do it. And the Green Hoover Celebrity Canister will do it. But other than that, none of my other machines will actually pull themselves across the floor like this. So I love that. That's just a, a great thing. But um, the, the handle release pedal is on the wrong side, just like it is on the Hoover Platinum Lightweight Bag. It is on the wrong side. The most vacuums have it on this side, and, it, and that's where it belongs, really. But it's easy to press. It's very simple. It, it looks like it would never break, just the design of it. And it has a really deep travel, which I love. I love deep travels on computer keyboards, on vacuums, anything with a switch. I love a deep travel. But that's just really cool. It is a little bit narrow. You know, you don't have a lot of room. But I just activated my clapper with that stupid... Uh, Pedal. I hate the clapper, by the way. Don't ever buy one. I should get the one with the remote instead. But it always turns the light off when I'm unloading the dishwasher. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just end this part of the video because the next part is actually where I show the machine working. And so I'm going to just move right into that part of it to show you uh, the operation of the machine and my final thoughts. Thanks for watching. To make sure that the dirt is, is in the camera. So that's how it picks up a little bit. Um, you can hear the sound as well. It does a great job. It just does what it's supposed to do. But I'm actually going to take the camera off the tripod because I want to show a few other things. Um, I just want to show how the hose comes out because it's just so awesome. You just grab this handle. It's like a mini handle. It's like this handle, but it's a mini version. And you just pick the hose up. The suction's there already because this is a direct air machine. It's not a fan-first machine. But what a comfortable handle for the hose. I've never seen anything like it. Really awesome. Now, if you want to, um, and of course you can stretch the hose. Um, let's see. So, that's about as far as it comes. So, not very far. Um, you'd probably want to get the extension if you were going to use this for a lot of attachment cleaning. But, and I might. I might order it. But right now I don't have the attachments. They haven't come yet. They're supposed to ship on Monday from GoVacuum.com. So... If you want to detach the hose from the wand, and you've already taken it out, you just press this button here, and it'll come out just like that. Okay. But if you, if you other, the other thing you can do is to put it back in. You just pop it in through here, okay, and just run the vacuum. And it will automatically retract back into the machine. Is that not awesome? That's just awesome. But if you just want to take the hose out, and, and you haven't retracted the, 
the wand, you just want to use the hose. All you have to do, and this is so cool, simply pick it up. Just pick it up. It comes right out just like that. Isn't that awesome? Just love it. So let me put that back in. If you get a clog in the hose and you want to take it out from the other side, just pinch that and, and lift up. I've never really done this much. I think you need two hands, but it, it'll just come right out if you, if you do that. So, so cool. Isn't that great? I just love it. But um, let me just show you the bottom as well so you can see that. Back in. So here's a close-up of the foot pedal mechanism, and then the release for the um, the stop position is there. But the wheels are rubber coated. One really weird thing about it is that it doesn't have uh, two wheels on the bottom. It only has one, which I find kind of strange. But it also has a clean-out port on the bottom, so if you get a claw, you can actually just reach in there and feel that. So that's really cool. The belts, there are two, and they have teeth on them, and they are guaranteed for life. They're actually in a separate compartment from the dirt, so the dirt never abrades them, so that's really cool. And if you suck up something with the machine that it's not supposed to suck up, it will just turn off for you, so that's really cool. This is the brush roll. Um, I would call it a spiral pattern. I know the guy from GoVacuums.com called it Chevron, but I think Chevrons come together in the middle, and this, this does have an off-to-the-side suction pattern. The guy from GoVacuums.com also said that the reason this machine cleans so well, or, or the SIBO version of it, is because it um, has so many height adjustments, and that's why Kirby's cleaned so well, because they had so many height adjustments. I think that's hogwash. I think the reason Kirby's cleaned so well is because they're direct air machines and they have a bell-shaped nozzle. I don't think the amount of height adjustments has anything to do with it. You do need to have a vacuum with a manual or automatic height adjust, not a fixed one, but, um, you know, that's just silly to say that the reason the machine cleans so well is because of the height adjust. But anyway, he also said that royal vacuums, the thing that makes the seal between a royal vacuum and the carpet is the rubber bumper, which is actually the furniture guard. The metal plate is what makes the seal. So I really don't know if the guys at GoVacuums.com know what they're talking about. But they did have a good price on the accessories for this machine, so I'm not going to complain too much about them. But um, the metal plate was actually kind of scuffed. It's got some little uh, dings in it, but it still works like it should. So I polished it with some mothers and some 000 steel wool, and it looks pretty good. I've already got some carpet fibers on here. I cleaned this. When I got this, the whole the whole thing here was actually covered with, um, with hair right there where the suction inlet is. But I, I got it cleaned, so that's a that's a good thing. The brush is very stiff, actually, and it doesn't have a um, a beater bar at all, but it still works very well. And it's a plastic brush roll. It's not um, wooden, so you can actually wash it, and it'll come clean. So I washed it. I didn't replace the lubricant, though, on the ends, and I probably should. I do have some grease that I can put back on there just so that, it, um, so that I'm not hurting it. But you know what? If I do need to change the brush roll, it's so simple to um, to change. It really is. Let me show you that slide that over. So now when I recline the handle, it's actually going to this is hard with one hand. It's actually going to um to fall down and then stop there. Okay, so to change the brush, I'm just gonna press this button. And then this end cap will come off if you do it right. It's actually hard with one hand, really. But there, so that's done. That's out. Now I can just take a hold of this brush roll. Okay, you have to twist it a quarter turn, but see the end cap just comes off. And then you can actually just pull the brush roll out. Just like that. See how cool that is? Isn't that awesome? I just love it. So, you know, if you need to clean it, that's good. If you need to replace it, that's good. But that's the inside. You can actually see through it on the other side. So just love it. But let's see if I can put this back on one-handed. I really don't know. I've never done it before. I did it once when I cleaned, but like I said, I'm so new to these machines that I really don't have much experience with that. Alright, I think it's back in right. Just pop this back on. Now this was hard when I, um, just because I don't know the machine yet, but this, this was actually not easy. There it goes. Alright, so got it. So, I'm just going to show some of the suction with the hose as well, because I've got some more dirt to show. So, just 
just going to pick it up. They call this an active wand. I guess that means that there's always suction there, which is true, but any direct air machine would have that. Even though, and that's, that's really good suction, I know you probably couldn't tell in video, but that was really good suction. Even though you can't, look, it's trying to give me a hug right now, isn't that great? But no, even though you can't tell it in the video, that the host does not snap tight when you're, um, when you're using it. So, um, that's a good thing. I'm still trying to get out of this, it's like a dog with a leash, you know, wrapping it around your foot there. Um, wow, I've never been entangled in a vacuum before. Um, even when you're using it, it doesn't snap tight, but it doesn't have a suction relief valve or any way to control the motor speed, so it's always on full blast. But if I use a Hoover wind tunnel, um, you know, the hose is going to snap tight, and it's going to make the machine fall over. This one falls over just because the machine is, the hose is so short, and the hose is actually really high up on the vacuum. If I were to use a Dyson, which mine has cocoa in it right now, I sucked up cocoa, I spilled a whole box of cocoa in the pantry, not good, but, um, you know, the Dyson hose comes out of the bottom of the back, so it's really low, so when you pull the machine, it doesn't fall. The Eureka SmartVac does the same thing. So those are good things about those. Not much else about them is good. <laughs> a few things, but um, this one actually just comes out of the top, which is a really poor design. But you'd think they would at least put an anchor at the bottom or something, but I think it's primarily because this is really meant to be an upright first. But, um, you know, I think the extension hose would help, and then if you got the vacuum and, and you put the extension hose on, you could just lay the machine down flat on the floor and that would probably alleviate a lot of those problems. But, um, that's it. I think I don't really, I don't really have anything else to say about the vacuum. I just totally love it. Um, and I'm really glad that I have it. It's an awesome machine, a great performer, and, um, for now it's my daily driver. So, the only thing is, though, I can't use it on the shag rug. I can't use many machines on the shag rug. Um, I have, I have a, a few that I can use on the shag rug. Some of my favorites I can't, though, and that would be this one. Um, I can't use the smart vac. I can't use the platinum lightweight bags. I can't use the wind tunnel. Um, I really don't have a lot that'll work on the shag. The ones I have that'll work on the shag are the Eurekas, mainly the 1934A and the Sanitaire, and the other ones, the Royals kind of work. The Kirby Centria and G5 work great. I've not tried the non-self-propelled Kirbys yet, so I don't know how they work. The Dyson almost works, but it stretches the belt. Uh, makes a really bad noise, and it's, it is hard to push. Um, the Kenmore Direct Drive works somewhat on a shag rug, but right now I've got it out because I'm using it to clean the dryer filter. But that's a good vacuum. I don't use it as much as I really should. But the other one that works pretty well is the Hoover Z. So I've got my Cruiser, Wildcat, and, and Z back there, but the Z works pretty well on a shag rug. But no, this one doesn't. It'll actually stop. It bogs down. It, it, it just... Actually, I tried it once, and the brush roll motor <laughs> actually, it actually thought that the brush roll was bad, just like it did when I tried it on a bare floor. It actually had that light flash, and it would have turned off if I'd continued, so not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. But that's all I had to say about this one for now. I don't know a whole lot else about it, really, because I've just gotten to know it, just gotten it. Um, oh, the last thing, the, um, the cord comes out of the top just like it should. You know, a lot of vacuums, it comes out way down there at the bottom, and then you have to reach for it if you drop it, or it has a cord clip, you know and then you've got to put it in the clip, and then it comes out of the clip, like that Eureka up there, you know. So, um, not good, but this one actually comes out right where it should. Really, they, they just did everything so well with this machine, I just can't say how much I love it. I can't express it enough, but we'll see. If it fails, um, I'll replace it for sure, because I do like it, but, um, or fix it, probably, But because uh, every part can be fixed in those. But I wanted to show something else that I got, just because I don't want to make separate videos, but... I actually bought a Nest learning thermostat, and I'm loving it, loving it. Um, it was $250, which is a lot for an apartment, especially, um, you know, since it is an apartment, but my previous thermostat was a Hunter, and I liked it. I liked it a lot, actually, um, for what it was, but it was hard to program. My favorite feature was the Home Today button, because I could press that when I was home, and it wouldn't do the program. 
but it was hard to program, and it just it wasn't fun, you know. It was just boring. But also, I couldn't control it from my cell phone. Look, my my Hoover celebrity's leaking insulation in that awful. Um, I couldn't control it from my cell phone, and that really sucks because I like to be able to. Um, sometimes I'm laying in bed, you know, and and I wanted a remote control thermostat because I just don't want to get up to change the stupid thermostat. So this one I can control from my Android phone or a computer, or I can walk right up to it and control it from the device itself. So really awesome design from the people at Nest. I love it. Um, it, it went on easily, uh, it installed easily, and it just works so well. Um, when it's cooling, it actually turns blue. If you put it on an energy saver setting, it, you'll get a little leap. Now it's actually telling me that it will um, take that long to cool. It just went away, but you press to select, and then you have your options, and then you turn the dial, it's a jog dial, to, to make your choices. So. I'm just having a lot of fun with that now. But the only problem is that this came the same day I got the uh, the Windsor, and so I didn't know what to play with first, but uh, I think the Windsor went out, actually. It did. It went out. And so while the parts were drying, I played with the thermostat and got it installed. But um, if you have any questions about this awesome machine, just let me know. I know there are other videos about it, but I haven't made any about it yet, so I wanted to include that since I have a lot of my collection on here already. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks. Take care. Bye.